Hello, welcome to my bench. This is not going to be a, a mailbag. I only got one thing here. And uh, we're going to open that up here in just a second. Um, it's I got a piece in for repair a couple weeks ago. And I uh, I went through it. I didn't, I didn't make a video out of it because, well, part of it's broken and I don't really think it's possible to get the part that's broken, unfortunately, but uh, I think maybe I can get the rest of it fixed. So, in this package is what I ordered last week, and we'll see if this does any anything to fix this thing. But, oh, open it up. And out it comes. That's it. Okay. And it's in this little package here. Whoa. Wow. Well sealed. This is one of those parts that's very hard to get. Oh, boy. And well wrapped. It's interesting what they did in this device, and we'll see here in a little bit after we get this out of here somehow. I think I need a new blade because this thing is really struggling with tape. That's not a good sign. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Ah, oh, good. It's in one of them little pink bags. It's better than nothing. Half of a little pink bag. How in the... And there it is. There it is. MC 1496G. Can you focus on that? Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, it's an IC. And what it is, it is a balanced modulator IC from Motorola. Well, what this goes in. is this right here. This is a Yesu YC601, not a B, frequency counter, or actually digital display for an FT101. And uh, this one is not functioning. Um, and it has, a, has two problems that I can tell. Well, I went through it. It's missing a little foot here. These, these have been replaced in the front, but the little foot here has been re not replaced, and they're missing. Maybe I can find some of those. Um, on the front, it's got your digital display, uh, which are called uh, little Nixie sort of tubes. And um, calibration knob here, and your different bands, including 11 CB, because this was made back in, way back in the day when the uh, original FT-101s came out. On the back of it, we've got a couple of plugs here uh, for the VFO and an input, just a RCA input. These plugs are uh, to go to the radio. So, not much else. And there's the insides. It uh, doesn't look all that complicated, but I went through this thing, and I'll tell you, as far as power supplies go, weak is not the, uh, the right term for this. It's horrible. It's just a horrible power supply. Uh, what I've replaced so far in this, just to show you just the basic stuff, went through the power supply first off. It was not working. Uh, it had a little Zener diode, which is right down here. Um, and let's see if we can go over to the schematic, which, by the way, is not right. So let's go to the schematic over here. And you can see you've got an 18 volt tap on your transformer, and it's good for 100, 110, and 117 volts. 
you got an 18 volt tap, you've got a 13 and a half volt tap, this is your ground. Down here is your uh, 1.5 volts, which goes to the heaters of the tubes up here in the front. Uh, this diode right here, which is just marked as a diode, is actually a 1S993, which is a 3.3 volt zener. It's not marked that way. Uh, it was blown. This capacitor here was blown. This capacitor here was blown. I mean, just dead. Um, and these diodes here were good, but I replaced them anyway with one N4007s. Uh, and the this part here, well, well, quit that. This part right here is not in this this one, and I cannot find a schematic for this power supply anywhere. Um, it does not have this little Zener diode and stuff. This goes to the calibration, so evidently they're doing calibration somehow differently with this power supply or this unit than they are with the the one I've got, the only one I can find um, schematic for. The um, the uh, the MC, well the 7805 down here, right here, that is over here, uh, and what's actually in here is a 14305 from NEC. Uh, it works, and that 5 volts, if we go up here, is used um, way up here. It goes up up into the switching circuit for these transistors here, uh, and well, a couple other places. It goes to this uh, UPD 249s. Now, that the UPD 249s are this one, this one, and this one. These things are made out of stuff that comes off of, evidently off of uh, Mars. And uh, NEC only had enough to make that lot because there ain't no more in existence that I can find anywhere. What these things are is they are digit drivers for the display. And what you end up getting is, um, well here, I'll show you. Let me plug this thing in. Uh, turn it on, that would be good. What you end up getting is that. Those do, that second digit there doesn't change. And that means that that digit driver, that uh, uh, UP, U, UPD, UPB, well that's hard to say together, uh, 249D is bad and I believe it's that one right there. Anyhow, uh, well, all that does really is it switches the second digit. Like, <laughs> you know, if you're in 40 or 80 meters, you're going to be at uh, 3 something. If you're in 40 meters, you're going to be at 7 something. If you're in 20, you're going to be 14 something. Uh, so that's really not all that necessary to have that second digit. So I said, you know what? Let's just see if we can fix this thing. Well, I started tracing it out. And. Um, like I said, the power supply is filthy dirty. It's a uh, halfway rectification. Look back down here on the schematic. Um, if we look over here, it's halfway rectification. Uh, the only filtering you've got is 2200 on uh, right here for your 13 and a half volts. And where is it? Uh, right there, 1000 for your 18 volts um, negative and that's it that's all, all you've got it, 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 it's just you know I'm almost tempted to put a bridge rectifier in this thing somehow and and make it better but yeah, we'll see what it does first anyhow so I started tracing this thing out and I, I can feed it a signal um, into the input here Let's see, get something 
So we'll just take the red one here. Uh, we'll plug it into my output of my Motorola and pump this into here. And these are all wired in, in parallel. Everything's in parallel, so it's, it'll work just fine. 7 megahertz going through that piece of wire is not going to hurt anything. Take the scope here. Um, plug it up. Okay. Uh, and turn this guy on. Give me a ground someplace, someplace or other. Get my little camera here. And we'll just show you. Let's see if I can get this to sit here. That would be nice. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, maybe I can. Okay. Uh, we'll start that recording and we'll take here's my input uh, gotta give it a little more input there's a uh, minus 47 DB 1.1 millivolts uh, that's not much I'll gun it Quit that. Alright. See that right there? That horrible sign that that that's the power supply. And we're talking 50, 100, 200, almost 200 millivolts of ripple on that thing, and that's just the way it is. So what we gotta do, take our time per division out. and see if I can get a signal here there's my input now look at that look, look at that mess that is just horrible and it's all because that because of that power supply but if, if you catch down here every once in a while it'll say 7 megahertz okay now I traced all this stuff through and as far as I got was if we look at the schematic uh, over here uh, I got my amplification coming in here and let's see if I can show it to you through the yeah through this transistor back here yeah it's it's there but because of that mess, it's almost impossible to see. There you go. All right, there's your frequency coming out of the transistor's collector. That goes uh, through T4. Oh, yeah, and by the way, every can in here has busted slug. Somebody's been in it doing their thing. Uh, through T4, comes out, goes into pin 1 uh, right there of the MC1496G. Uh, that is mixed right right here where this comes out through this capacitor into pin 8 right there so it comes down here over here down to there okay well I checked it I got the 11 going in I got the 7 going in or whatever frequency I'm in not it going in and I got nothing coming out so I said that's as far as I can go um, for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the can and see if that happens. I already ordered the can. I didn't know how long it was going to take. It actually only took a couple of days. I was surprised. Well, three days, I guess. I try to order um, in country if I can. Especially on stuff like this because you never... What in the world? That is one long screw. Okay, I'd forgotten. Um, and so they, they get here pretty quickly, but you never really know. I think the... 
Yeah, they're kind of trapped in there a little. I guess that's cool. That one. I like this little screwdriver, but when it if it stops or it gets hung up, it just stops. It doesn't pull very hard. All right, so let's get this out of here. Now uh, here's a here's a look at your little tubes. They're kind of cool little tubes. 1.3 volt filaments, and um, they're um, they work nice, and they stay bright for a long time. I've I've seen them before. The only problem is, like I said, they uh, they the, the drivers not available. If anybody out there, any of my viewers out there, knows where I can get that. PB chip. Let me know, please. Anyhow, so we're going to take this guy and put him back in. Now, the way you do this, you'll notice that the legs are definitely not spread out far enough. So, the way I was taught is you pull them out about halfway up and just give them a little tiny bit of a bend so that they're they line up with the uh, with the holes in the board there is and I've only seen it a couple of times but they do have a socket that these things go into that um, will actually do this for you. I've only seen, like I said, I've only seen it a couple of times. That looks about right. These guys have a little tab right there on the can and it lines up with the tab on the board. Must have gate glasses for this. Because I cannot see it without it. Alright. This is a double-sided board. It actually is double-sided. I was kind of surprised. Um, it's uh, not uh, not griplets, which is a very good thing. Ugh. Basically, the plan here is you start somewhere didn't quite get them far enough out and they got to be kind of squared off and pointing down so pain in the neck uh, I'm hoping this is not going to be a long video and I'm really hoping but this at least gets my display to read because right now it's not reading with the old IC. It's not reading uh, any any input at all, which would make sense if I couldn't get any output of this thing. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> let's try it this way. You can't see anything. Sorry about that. I don't think. Can you at all? Wow. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, I 
wish I had that pin pin straightener. I'll tell you what, let's pull the old one out and sort of try to sort of try to match it up here. See how this one is? The legs are bent at an angle too. Well, that's what we're trying to do with this one. And we ain't got it yet. These are kind of fragile. There's uh, several different brands of them. Well, not brands. They're all Motorola's, but they're, some have different legs. This, I believe, is one of the later versions because the legs on it are not copper or gold plated or whatever those other ones are. Um, they're just regular, regular connector legs. Mm, yeah, there are ten legs in this thing. So how are we? Um, wow. That's darn close. Let's try this again. I think I'll try it with a pair of pliers. I had forgotten. There is a way to fool it with this thing. What you do is you find your first one, you cut just a little bit off of the second one, you cut a little bit more off of the third one, And it's got to be a teeny tiny little amount. But that way, you can sort of just walk it around if you're lucky. Yeah, I can't do this with pliers got to do it with what I was born with. Maybe. How would you like to be the guy whose job it was? Aha. Uh -huh. Got the first couple started. Let's give it some light here. I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to see this. Um, whose job it was to put these ICs in all day. Wow, what a horrible job. Okay. We got it. Let's see. All right. Right there. Let's uh, bring you down. See it? Right here? See how silly trying to get those legs in there is? But we got it. Uh, I'm really hoping this works because um, things that thing was fourteen dollars for that little IC. All right. Well, David, you forgot to turn on. Hmm. All right. Well, we gotta wait for that to warm up. Ah, uh, 
I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Soldering weapon is heated up. Uh, that was close. I almost lost all the uh, the video on that last one from the um, from my computer. I think my computer is doing a Windows update because it is slow. I use a program called Pinnacle and it's got multicam capture and uh, the multicam capture was really working slowly it's working better now since I it shut down on me right in the middle of saving the um, saving the files but I did get the one I needed somehow alright so let's solder this guy in here. You know what? Just to be careful, make sure that 10 is pointing to 1. Yes, it is. Oh, or to 10. To ground. The, um, like I said, the can is grounded on this. I have checked pretty much everything I can check in here. It's not a terribly complicated circuit but it is one fragile board this uh, little piece of coax here is where the um, 11 megahertz comes over and joins I guess they couldn't make it work in the uh, just on the board even though they did use make a double sided board for it I don't uh, don't really understand but hey this thing is old 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 oh let's see did we get them all Yeah, we did. Cut off the long ones. The rest of them are pretty short. What's this deal here? Oh, nothing. Okay. Alright, so we got that. Got the IC put in. Let's uh, kind of screw this board down a little. The uh, screws in the board are not ground, but uh, that's that's kind of neat. Little little <laughs> uh, attention to detail. These uh, screws are captured in the little standoffs. Make sure my little tubes are standing up straight okay and pull her up here I just want to tighten this down yeah wrong screwdriver for the job I know I know I know I don't know what these screwdrivers are, but they've held me in good stead for a while. They were cheap. I've got a good iFixit set, but I have to change bits and all that kind of stuff, and it's just not worth the effort. Okay. Did everybody look happy with themselves? Let's stand this back up. Come on, there you go. Alright. We'll plug, red, red. Okay. Should be able to read a millivolt. <laughs> well, if not, I've got more to give it, but. Well, here we go. 
have a libation first. Plain old coffee. This is um, uh, Sumatran, I believe. Good and strong. Okay, uh, we're off. Turn it on. Blink the blink. And nothing. Okay, so we've gotten that far. It's been a couple of days. I sort of took a little time off. <laughs> but hey, we're back. And um, I thought we'd take a little look and see how this thing actually works. And I can shut you up. Yeah, now you'll just buzz. Um, what happens, how this thing actually functions is the frequency that you feed it comes in one of these three plugs back here depending on what you're hooking it up to right now I just got it going into the RCA goes through this little transistor which amplifies it the output of this goes through this little bandpass filter here uh, two coils and then it goes into the output of that goes into this little IC that we just replaced that little IC is being used as a mixer and it takes this 11.1 .1 megahertz second fundamental of 22.2 uh, .2 megahertz mixes it with the frequency you're putting in here puts it out over into I believe it's this one uh, which shapes the waveform it basically it's just an inverter sort of cleans it up this is a 7404 um, and a couple of steps and then um, then it further gets mixed with after this it gets mixed with this frequency here which is 1.3 megahertz uh, divided down through uh, one of these chips well yeah right here this MS MSM 55 60 something um, if I can see that 55 64 down to um, 5 Hertz that 5 Hertz is used as a uh, trigger and a blanking pulse for your display. So, what you feed in here is the output of your VFO. The output of the VFO on an FT-101 is between 8.7 megahertz on the low side and 9.2 megahertz on the high side. However, the 9.2 megahertz is going to uh, be the low end of the band and the 8.7 is going to be the high end of the band because when they do their mixing through here they, they don't add it, they subtract it. So huh, after it all gets done through here then it displays on your display here. Uh, the megahertz range is programmed by the diode matrix, which is these 20 or 30 some odd diodes over here in this mess. Let's see if I can get down in there a little bit and show you. There's a whole bunch of diodes down in here. And they're all switched by your switch here on the front. What you're working with is a total of 500 kilohertz spread between 13 and 13.5 at the input signal. The frequency of the heterodyne oscillator is shifted 4 kilohertz, plus or minus 4 kilohertz, by adjusting this. So, that's how that basic part works. The rest of it is all timing for the uh, display up in front. So let's put the uh, my signal generator here on 9.2 megahertz. And when I do that, you'll see here that we're blinking, um, blinking, <laughs> which is, uh, right now I'm on 40 megahertz, so it, that would be a uh, 7 over there, that digit that's bad. If anybody's got one of those ICs in there, please, please let me know. Uh, anyway, so you tune this until it quits blinking, as close as you can get to it, and then I'm going to go down in frequency by... Um, 10 kilohertz. I'm going to go down 10 kilohertz in frequency on my my uh, frequency counter here, and we'll see that this thing latches around and it 
went up 10 kilohertz. We'll go down another 10 kilohertz and it went up to 20. So as you go down in frequency from 9.2, we'll go all the way down to 8.7. Well, let's see. Let's do a little faster than that, okay? Uh, come on, down. Move, thank you. There, 8.7. So I'm going to be at 7.330. Now the end of the band for 40 meters is 7.300 so if I took this down to 8.7 and down 1 kilohertz 2 kilohertz or being up sorry where is it 3 oh man okay so the frequency coming out of the um, VFO is what drives this, and your VFO is going to put out the right frequency. So right there, at 8.9 megahertz, we are at 7.3000, and at 9.2. We are at the low end of the band, which is 7.000. Anyway, that's how this thing works, and we got it working. I did not mess with the power supply anymore, and yes, it's just as dirty as it was. <laughs> um, evidently, this wave shaping thing makes it work, but uh, it's, uh, it, it's awful. I hate to see something like that. Um, so basically, all I did was replace the, the capacitors and that Zener diode and these caps in here and the other diodes in there. Um, checked it all out. Replaced this 1496, MC 1496, yeah, 1496G. And dug the coil or the, the slugs out of these co all these coils um, because somebody had cracked them on the top. Now what you do with those, if, you, if you're lucky enough you can get to them from the bottom. This particular one I could get to from the bottom. You take your tuning tool and you kind of wiggle them a little bit upside down and hopefully you drop that piece out of there that's busted off the top and then you can back them off. If the piece drops out you can screw it back down through and it'll fall out the front. If not you have to screw it all the way backwards um, and come out the back of it. If you have, and if you can't do that, you have to take it off, uh, take the whole coil off to get to it. So, it, it's it's kind of a pain in the neck, but you get used to doing it. Um, so, I guess this thing works works quite well actually. And um, like I said, the only only thing that's bad in it now is one of these micro U or P micro micro PB. 249C um, and I desperately need one of those if anybody's got one let me know I'd be glad to pay a reasonable price for it uh, so I can get this thing back up and running and maybe put it on somebody's bench it's got a nice Yaesu FT101 because these are kinda getting getting uh, older and uh, harder to get a hold of uh, the funny thing about this one is this power supply is not the same that's in any manual I've got and the calibration actually according to the manual here the what the what this plus the calibration does is it varies the um, capacitance between drain and gate of Q28 uh, that and and that's a you know MOSFET or FET, uh, and, and the drain voltage is varied when you do that with this calibration pot, and some of the power supplies it's actually on the on this board 
uh, with a zener and some other stuff. On this one, it's not. One of the interesting things in here, real quick, I'll just show you is, and they used to do this a lot. Um, and down here, if you take a look right there at that, there's a coil wrapped around a resistor, and it looks like brown, black, something. So it's one zero zero. I don't know. It doesn't tell you in the manual either. But there's a bunch of wire wrapped around it, and they're using the body of the trans, the resistor, and the coil uh, to um, make a brute force coil for the five volts that's going in here to clean up the five volts or the power that's going in for this thing to clean it up that's a, that's one way of doing it from the old world and uh, it does work and in a pinch if you need something you could just take a whole bunch of wire and wrap it around one of those things with a drill on one end and wire on the other and some red, it's got to be red uh, nail color. For some reason it has to be red. Uh, and make yourself your own coil. I've had to do it several times for some old junk that I've worked on. So anyhow, there it is. It's working. It's happy. And uh, tell you what, let's just for fun, let us go down, see what happens when we go down one kilohertz. We'll just go down one kilohertz from 9200. Oh, okay, so we didn't have it. <laughs> There's 2200, so we gotta gotta zero it exactly. It's a little more accurate than the dial on a on a, <laughs> um, a FT101, but not much. So let's go down one kilohertz here with that thing right on the hairy edge. There's my one. So I'm going down one kilohertz. I'm going up one kilohertz, actually. Take it down another one kilohertz. There's my two. Down to 197. There's my three. See if I can get this tuned in just a little bit better. It's touchy. It's probably not, it's probably touchier than the one with the power supply that actually has the zeners on it that's a little better regulated. Anywho. There we go. So we fixed that, except for the display. But we'll uh, we'll just wait around and keep cruising the eBay to see if I can come up with one of these chips. And when I do, it's going in a socket. I'm telling you that right now. All right. So hey, give it a thumbs up if you like the video, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell down there so you know when I'm doing another one. And um, yeah, tell all your friends. <laughs> I need all the subscribers I can get. Till next time.